Hi guys, I'm Alicia and today I have a really kind of like funny video for you. Um, if you spend any time on TikTok at all, you may have seen this video of Tana Mojo like endorsing Bryce Hall for his fight with Austin McBroom. It's not my beef, but you know, we team Bryce out here. Right. <laughs> Even team the paparazzi Bryce. team Bryce. Um, and I noticed that she's wearing like a little knit set, so I made it. I know this is my usual kind of content, but I thought that it was fun and I like the colors, so I just went for it. Um, I wanted to thank you guys so, so, so much for getting me to a thousand subscribers. Like, I've only been doing this for like a month or so and like, it's just like so, so exciting to me. So thank you so, so much. This is a knitting tutorial. I'm sorry if you guys are here for crochet, but this is so simple that you can absolutely do it in crochet. Just sub wherever I say to like knit a rectangle for crochet a rectangle. You can do it with any stitch, it really doesn't matter. It's actually like really, really simple. We're just making a rectangle for the top, adding straps, and then this is literally just a rectangle with like a little hole in the side for your thumb really really simple like you're literally just making a rectangle a rectangle and a rectangle so nice and easy um i hope you guys enjoy and let's get into the video so you're going to start with a slip knot and you need to cast on enough stitches so that it will wrap around like here on like the big part of your arm so for me i tested um a couple and I need 17 stitches on the hook and I include the uh, knot as well. So to cast on I lift up my thumb like that and I hold it kind of loosely with my pinky finger and so I need 16 more. So see what I did there? I put my needle underneath So that was one cast on, two, three, and sixteen, so a total of seventeen. And now with my other needle, I am just going to do regular knit stitches until I have a piece that is long enough to go from about here on my hand all the way up to like my elbow crease. If you're brand new at knitting, how to do a knit stitch. So you've got like each of these count as a stitch. You're going to take your second needle, put it underneath. And now you are going to wrap your yarn around the back needle uh, counterclockwise. And you're going to pull from underneath and push that stitch off of the top and now you transferred it over to the other hook or to the other needle. So we're going underneath, inserting our hook, going counterclockwise around, pulling our right hand needle underneath and pushing it off. Again, wrap around. Pull it underneath, making sure that we're catching that stitch and pushing off. There's a bunch of ways that you can hold your knitting needles, but I find that this is the best way for beginners. I am just doing a normal knit stitch the entire way. I'm not doing anything fancy. We are just making a long rectangle and that is all. So I'm just going to get to the end
All right, so we're just going to repeat what we just did for a bunch more rows until we have a piece that's long enough. So we're doing the exact same thing that we did on the last row, just inserting our hook, wrapping around, pulling underneath, and pushing off. This is just your basic knit stitch. Just do a whole bunch of rows like this. So I've got my little arm piece long enough for what I want, and remember it's extremely stretchy. So now we're going to cast off. This is just how you finish your work. So what I am going to do is just make two stitches like normal. You know how I was saying before how there's different grips for how you can knit? This is like the crocheter's grip. Uh, so you put two stitches on your second needle, and then you're going to take the first one, pull it over top of the second one, and over the needle like that while leaving that one there. Then you're going to put another stitch on, pull it off, and then you take that bottom one, pull it over the top one, and yeah, you're casting off. So do a stitch, pull it off, stitch, pull it off, nice and simple until you get to the end. Alright, so now I'm on my last stitch. So just as we did the other ones. We pull it off and now we have this one on our hook. I'm just going to pull up a little bit, snip my yarn, and pull that end through the little loop that we made, and tie off. Nice and easy. Now what we're going to do is fold it and sew along the edge. That you might be like, oh my god, that is so tiny, my arm will never fit. But look at how much this stretches. Knitting is generally usually very stretchy, and then also I'm using a large needle in comparison to the thickness of the yarn that I'm using. So, yeah. What you'll need for this is a darning needle. These are just like a kind of like blunt plastic needle and I just cut a piece of string that is longer than what I actually need to go all the way down the long side of our um, little sleeve thing and so I'm just going to hot dog fold my little armband here and just right in the corner. And I'm just going to string on my needle. And with that little hot dog fold in the top corner, with the both sides sandwiched together, just pulling through a little piece of yarn and then just knotting it twice so it's nice and secure and it's going to stay and now to make the little thumb hole I put that knot kind of like at the crease where my thumb is and with that leftover piece of string I am just going to lace it through back and forth the front and the back a couple of times. You can do this with your needle. I'm trying very hard to just do it with my fingers, but it's not really working. But I just kind of like loop it over a couple of times. And I'm just going to fasten it with another piece of yarn that I had from the start of my project. Just so that I have this little thumb hole now, so. 
looks like this, and then we're gonna sew together the rest of the pieces, right? So I have this leftover string that I had just fastened on. I'm gonna put that on my needle. Hot dog fold our um, armband here and I am just sewing up the side. To make it faster for yourself, you can do a couple of stitches at a time, like this. Try to match up the two sides pretty evenly so that you don't have like way extra hanging off the end. And I'm just going to do this all the way down. Until the entire side is securely sewn up. You don't want to pull too tightly or your uh, work will start to shrink. I like to give it a nice stretch so that it remains stretchy even when I'm done and it's all like sewn together. So after every few stitches, just give it a little stretch. Alright, so I've gone all the way up the side and now I'm just at the end and now I'm just going to loop my stitch over a couple times on the end just to secure it and then just tie off, I just make like a double knot. Once that feels secure for you, then you can just snip it off. And then we're done our little armbands, and we can move on to the top. I, even the paparazzi team Bryce on God. Lovely, this is what they look like. Maybe I'll just keep them on for the rest of this. Um, but as we move forward, we are going to do almost the exact same thing for the top. We're just going to make a long rectangle to cover our chest. And then we're going to add little straps at the end. So I'm starting with a slip knot. And I kind of like estimated that I will need 20 stitches, including this little knot one. So I need to make 19 more. So I cast it on one, two, 19. And then we are just doing knit stitches. So I just want you to keep on doing almost exactly what you did for the sleeves, but for your chest, what you're, so this is going to be the height or the length of the shirt. If you don't want it as cropped, I want mine to be basically just covering what needs to be covered and that's all. Um, but you can totally adapt this to make this like a longer tank top, whatever you like, honestly, but we're just going to make like a long rectangle. So think of like a tube top and then add on straps. So just make those rows and rows and rows until you have a piece that is long enough to wrap around your chest. And remember, this stuff is stretchy, so um, you might actually need to go smaller than what you thought, but the best way to actually gauge what is the right size is to just try it on. Try it on over and over and over again. I'm constantly doing this. So I've got my piece done for the top. It looks tiny, but of course it stretches out a lot. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing that I did with the little armbands. So we're just casting off now. So you do two stitches, one, two, and pull the first one over top of the second one. Do another stitch. 
pull the first over the second. And we're just repeating until we get to the end. So I've gotten to the end, I only have one stitch left to go. So I am just going to do that last stitch, pull that last bit over, and now I have this end loop. I'm going to leave a strand that's long enough to go down the side with a little bit extra. And snip, I just like to leave myself a lot because this is the piece that we're going to use to sew up the side. And just to secure your knitting work so it doesn't go anywhere, I just put my string through that loop and pull tightly. Now we're going to take our darning needle and fold our piece and we're going to sew up the side. So I'm just stringing my thread through my needle. And now, with my two pieces together here, I want to line them up as best as I can and just go from one side to the other and just sew up the back. I'm like going right to left and then reaching over and just keep doing right to left. Trying to catch every stitch on my way up. So now I'm just at the end and I want to just secure my work. I'm just doing a double knot right here. And then once that's tied nicely, you can snip off and you have your little tube top piece. Now we're going to add straps. I would try it on and mark where you want to put the straps. If you have a crochet hook, making these straps will be super nice and simple. If you don't have a crochet hook, you should get one because crocheting is lovely and amazing and awesome. <laughs> but uh, you could just braid together three strands and attach those as straps. But what I'm going to do is make a slip knot. So what I'm going to do is put that slip knot on my hook, attach it where I want the strap, do a slip stitch, and then just chain as many chains as you need. If you're just braiding it, you can just tie on your braid to the end here but I find with the uh, with a crochet hook it's much easier for me. So I personally did a chain of 50 but I encourage you to measure the length that you actually need your strap to be and try it on. Make sure that it is perfect for you because depending on the kind of yarn you have and like the size between like your shoulders and your chest like everybody's different so I encourage you to measure it on yourself and try it on. So then what I'm going to do is in my spot in the back, I'm just going to do a slip stitch, chain one, and tie off. If you're not using a crochet hook, then literally just tie a double knot and attach your braid. And I'm going to repeat the exact same thing on the for the other strap. And then I will show you what it looks like on. It's not my beef, but you know, we team Bryce out here. Right. <laughs> Even the paparazzi team Bryce. Oh, God. I mean, it's not my beef, but we team Bryce out here. Even the paparazzi team Bryce. Oh, God. I literally made this outfit for this video. Okay, bye. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to check me out on Instagram and TikTok. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or send me a DM. But yeah, I'll be back with a new video soon. Bye.